Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I got uh, a warning a few years ago uh, that there were Russian ICBM missiles or something coming into Hawaii. And, man, it just freaked me out. Uh, but I received another warning about a month ago from someone that said, lock up your ho house and hide the women and children because I'm coming to Hawaii. Jason Jones, our, our, our native son here who we love so much, has moved to Texas, but he's been here in Hawaii for a month. So Jason Jones will be our guest. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. The surf has been up in Waikiki for, it's been a great summer of surf. We have a new swell that's come in. Uh, it's been breaking for about four or five days here. But poor Bear Wozniak, he doesn't get to surf. I ripped my, my glute mead loose while surfing in my outrigger canoe. But, uh, and, and they had to reattach it, be able to get in the water in a few weeks. But, but we have something even more uh, powerful here than the big surf in Waikiki. We've got a, a man of God, Jason Jones, who's here with us, who is, is a, <clears throat> one of the main advocates, one of the main frontline fighters, uh, in our pro-life movement and uh we got to know each other uh a few years back maybe well, i guess 10 years back um and for a lot of different reasons we 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 had an instant friendship and a brotherhood bond but one of them is because uh, we're both martial artists and my uh, sensei stephen master stephen hayes the first white ninja uh was one of his heroes but he informed me today that if i'm going to interview him i have to refer to him as seafood jason is it seafood do you want me to call you I mean, you, you call me whatever you want, Bear Wise, Nick. It's your show. Oh, or is it Sifu? I was I was messing with you. I said you could call me Master Sifu. Sensei. You know, I'm, brought, I'm actually at the Shaolin Temple now. In yeah, China. you're somewhere in China, deep in China. Yeah. yeah. And are you I'm actually honored? a block from you? I'm, I'm the white. <laughs> yeah, you guys. Jason, Jason's right here, but because of our technology, we have to stay. We have to do this. Uh, with him in, in his hotel room in Washington. I don't believe Beach. you. I think, Bear, I think you're still social distancing. I think you're one of those guys. You're just still in your house. I wear my mask even when wear I kiss my wife. Your, when you're skateboarding alone down the street. Yesterday we had some coffee, though. I, that, I, we had some Kai coffee, which we love here in Waikiki. We got to hang out for a few minutes. Yeah, having some right now. Coconut. Ah, uh, yeah. There's nothing better than Hawaiian coffee. My wife's a coffee snob, though. She prefers Starbucks. I'm just going to tell you the way it is. Uh, when we were in Italy, uh, when we were in Italy, dude, she's like, there's no Starbucks. Well, it's because they have real coffee here. You don't, don't tell me that, Bear. Don't tell me that. Yeah. Oh, she's... I love she's, you, Cindy. She overheard us say that. Jason, this has been an incredible... Uh, I like to say things like tectonic because people think I'm smart if I use words like that. But it's been... It's been a tectonic uh, couple of weeks now with the with the Supreme Court ruling, and I just want you to roll, man. Let us know what your thoughts are. What's the next step for us? Where are the battle lines going to be fought? And um, and uh, you know we're here to, we're here to listen to your take on everything. Yeah, I mean I think Bear, this is a great day. You know, um, the Dobbs decision, the overturning of Roe v. Wade. I mean Roe v. Wade was overturned, and uh, but praise that, God. Praise, Praise God, God, Jason. Yeah. You've been fighting Praise for God. this for, what, over 20, 30 years? 33 years. 33 years. And I'll tell you, Baron, 1991, after I'd already been in the pro-life movement for a couple of years, I was a young soldier, and I wrote a 40-year plan to end abortion. And in my original plan, it was in 2022, Roe v. Wade would overturn. Really? 2031 was the end of the plan when we had a human life amendment to the Constitution. And I didn't have any you know i'm not a prophet or anything i just i wanted to give myself a lot of years and um it's it's funny 40 years isn't a lot of time actually it's a lot of time in, in the lifespan of a human being but in a social movement it's not that much time and if you look at the civil rights movement the 100 years march uh the republican party marched for 100 years for the civil rights act um when that finally happened in 1864 then you had uh, 1964 you had the immense, you know, it was the abolitionists. The abolitionist movement began prior to um, prior to the founding of the Republic. 
And so the pro-life movement to have success in less than 50 years is absolutely unbelievable. Praise God. You know, the, the, uh, but the thing that you, that, you, that you, the way you fight this battle on a lot of different fronts, but you primarily you realize this isn't something that is, is not so much to be won on the legal battle, which it needs to be won, but it needs to be a change of culture, a change of hearts. And so your, your website, Movie to Movement, is all about that. By changing the hearts of people is how you're going to change uh, the actions of people. You know, yes, but nothing changes the heart more than law. The law is the great teacher. Posited human law should point to transcendent moral truth. St. Thomas Aquinas would say, wrote, and Martin Luther King, the Reverend Martin Luther King would often quote St. Thomas Aquinas, that a just law is a man-made law that conforms to the divine will. And of course, law exists to protect us as human beings, not to advance ideologies or artificial agendas, but to create a, a flourishing human society that points to our eternal destination and that found a fundamental truth is embedded in the founding of this republic with the declaration principle that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and that they're endowed by God with inalienable rights. We live in the only country in the history of the world that is founded on a vision of the human person. The founding fathers called it self-evident or axiomatic. It was self-evident to them but it was uh, that vision of the human person um, entered the world with the second person of the Trinity becoming man. And so the founding fathers, 1700 years later in Christian civilization, accepted it at face value that the human person had an inviolable dignity, beauty, and worth. And of course, it was denied by slavery. George Mason, John Adams, John Quincy Adams, they, of course, acknowledged this and fought to correct it. And then we had segregation. And now Roe v. Wade is overturned. You know, Bear, we could say now that federally, this is the first time since that little narrow window between the um, Civil Rights Act and Roe v. Wade, less than a decade, that we can now say that we don't have the law federally denying our founding principle. Now, states are denying it. We'll need like our home state of Hawaii, we will need to battle within our states. But Bear, this is such a beautiful thing. I interviewed Father Frank Pavone on my show. Um, today. The Jason Jones show. The Jason Jones show Jason is Jones available show. on YouTube. And the Bear else. Show was, I was going to take that. It was trademarked. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> on my show, and Father Frank Pavone said something very beautiful. He said, The Supreme Court opened the door for us. Are we going to walk through it and create a culture of life? Or are we going to walk through it and continue to promote a culture of death? So this is really, a, it's something to celebrate, but we need to up our activism. We need to become more engaged. We need to pray fervently now because there have been so, there's so many times in history where people think they have political or cultural success, but then the ball bounces horribly. You could look at the left with the victory of Joe Biden they thought they had some great victory, but now look at how the ball's bouncing for them very poorly. So we, we need to seize this opportunity to sprint through the door that has been opened by the Supreme Court, to be relentless, to have fortitude. This is something we have that the other side doesn't have. We're running against the wind, fighting the gods of the age, um, and yet we keep going. They have the wind at their back. They are conforming to the spirit of the age and yet they get tired so quickly. We need to sprint through this open door and run as far as we can, as fast as we can, uh, so we can leave our posterity a civilization of love and a culture of life. You know, I, I always paraphrase, but C.S. Lewis had something to say to this effect, that when you resist nature, and nature eventually wins. You know, it, you know you, it's like you try to squash it, and it's going to manifest in some other way, maybe when you least expect it. Uh, this, 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 the whole, the whole uh, essence of, of Sanger and 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 that that the the the, the some of the feminine uh, femin, feminazi type of radical leftist um, ideology is basically saying we're going to suppress nature. You know, we're gonna we're gonna make men into women. We're gonna abort babies. We're gonna use contraception. We are going to dominate nature. And guess what? Nature's not like that. <laughs> Nature, in the end, will prevail. And nature, of course, uh, is, is according to 
the, the the very nature that God, you know, the essence that God God gave the universe, the world, and us as, us as human beings. We're talking with Jason Jones. His uh, website is Movie to Movement. His book is A Race to Save Our Century. It's the most recent book. It's the uh, the race to save our century. And uh, and uh, your podcast can be found everywhere. And it's hard to remember it. I think it's called the Jason Jones Show. Is that right? Jason Jones Show. Starring Bear Wozniak. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Daniel the Moon Markham with another episode of Country Up, a part. Two times work took me across the country ahead of my family. Another time was separated from them for better part of a year in order to make ends meet. A part is hard. There is one particular fellow that works serious hard at keeping things apart or causing things to come apart. That would be the devil himself. Oh yes, he's real. The word diablos means the one who separates. He's been in the separating business since ancient time. We have to admit he's been fairly successful at living up to his name. Amazing what destruction he's accomplished with only one primary tool, lying. Confronting some religious liars, Jesus charged, You belong to your father the devil. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Could be that's why folks lie so much. Learned it from their daddy, the devil. So question is, how does one stop old slew foot in his tracks? Same way Jesus did. Repeatedly struck him down with the truth. It's why the Bible's called the sword of the spirit. Jesus said Diablos was not holding to the truth. So stands to reason that one who holds to the truth will not be deceived. There's a Bible verse, a counter blow, if you will, for each deception and temptation. Now, holding on to the truth can take a good deal of effort, like resisting the temptation of a beautiful woman, or cheating on your tax return, or resisting a powerful want to pass on a word of gossip. So know how to use your sword, strap it on, and draw it for battle blood without hesitation when called upon. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. Now you can journey with other men in the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue and servant leadership through Bears Man Cave non-Facebook community and our three-year school of manliness. Video, audio, and written content, as well as self-assessments help you to chart your new course. Join us at deepadventure.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Hey, you guys, I got to let you know, Sophia Institute Press has been so great. They've republished uh, my, my best-selling book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul. And uh, one of my books, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, they're both my children. People say, which, is, which of those two books do you like the best? And I go, well, they're like my children. I, they're each unique, and I love them in their own way. But I'm so so happy with Sophia and what they're doing with those books. So you can go to our website, deepadventure.com, click on store and buy them there, or go on Amazon or to Sophia. But I'm just a little bit, you know, I'm really impressed with Sophia. But then, Sophia, but then I heard this vicious rumor that they were publishing a book by my by my, by my guest, Jason Jones. What, did, what was Charlie McKinley thinking when he... Did that? Did that? Did that? I'm so book grateful with for you. Sophia Press. You know, they called me, and they said we want to publish your next book. And I have four books that I've sketched out, and I have dyslexia and ADHD, so I push forward on a lot of fronts. The one book I really wanted to write, I just didn't think a Catholic publisher would want to publish. And I pitched them three books, and I could tell they were kind of like, man. And then the, I said, well, the one I really want to do, and I said, there's one I want to do, but I'll hold off. I don't think you guys would be interested in it. And it's just my relationship with God. Um, from my earliest memories till today, and I was an atheist till my late 20s. And uh, the, the working title, I hope it's the title, is On Rocky Soil, 
a spiritual autobiography from someone you may not meet in heaven. And, um, and it's, so it's just about my journey. It's a very provocative it, statement. But I remember once you told me uh, you have hope because, uh, because uh, St. Jerome is a saint. You know, he was a very caustic type person. Of course, we were reading uh, his writings today in the Liturgy of the Hour, my wife and I. But And then the, the Marthas, of the, the people that are, are more caustic can make it to heaven. Maybe there's hope for, for, uh, for Jason Jones, too. But what do you mean by that? Does that mean you, 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 are, you, you believe you'll have sanctifying grace and you'll spend a, some time uh, in purgation? After well, I you die, so. I mean that's a no, real provocative uh, statement, Jason. Well, you know, Saint Paul told us we need to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. I think the the sin of the age among Catholics and believers and even atheists and others, mm. they presume on God's mercy. I think mm. a lot of people who pretend to be atheists are just angry at God and they're they're presuming that they're going to go to heaven. I the sin of presumption. I and when I was an atheist, I held to two beliefs at the same time. If I look back, I I. Did, I didn't believe in God at all. I thought the idea of God was absolutely and utterly ridiculous. And people who believed in God were ignorant and scared and superstitious. At the same time, when I look back, I believed in God 100%. And I believe that God was love and that God loved me because I'm so lovable. <laughs> Wait a and minute. <laughs> and that, that I, there's no way I'm not going to heaven. And then I think as I became a Christian, I think I believed two things simultaneously. I believe that that God is is truth, beauty, and goodness beyond all comprehension. And I have fallen so far from, through my choices, um, through my sin, from what God intended me to be, that there is just no way in the world, the universe, that an, un, an unfathomably beautiful God, so beautiful and good, could allow me in his presence for eternity. And then at the same time, I believe that God is love and I'm lovable and there's no way I'm not going to have it. And um, there's nothing I want more, of course, than to to fulfill what God created me to be, which is with him forever and eternity to love him. Um, but then I look at my life and how many people I've hurt and how broken I am and, and to look that I I was born in rocky soil. You know, my mother had me as a teenager. I never went to church. I was raised in an anti-theist home. Um, formed a lot of bad habits, as you could imagine, as a young man who didn't have any religion that was lonely and insecure and um, looking for so many things in the wrong places, as we all do. You know, because, you know, when I, and when, the other reason thing I wanted, to, I'm really working hard to, when you write a book like this, there's two things you don't want to do, Bear is I don't want to hurt people in my life today, and I don't want to be unjust to people in my life in the past. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, um, and Barry, you and I, um, I mean, you are a much better, you're a good man, and, and I don't think that I am, you know, what I would call a good man, but... You're what I, I would call a good man, Jason. Well, I have a good vocation, I, and I, but... Um, you're not a nice guy, though. Yeah, I may not be that, <laughs> but, but I... Um, I lost my train of thought, but I mean, I want to go to heaven. I want to spend eternity with God. But then when I look at how far I've fallen, oh, this is what I wanted to say. Guys like you and I, we travel, we speak, or we have an apostolate that people see. Sometimes I hate that people will come up to me and say, oh, you're such a good man. And I wish I could be like, you I'm like, don't ever ask that. You know, you are a beautiful human doing a great mm -hmm. thing. In the there you guys, go. There family. you go. And, um, so, and I read oftentimes, and especially in the evangelical world, you hear, I was the world's worst sinner, and then I found Jesus, and now I'm perfect. Well, I think oh, I yeah. was, Yeah. I think I was a mediocre sinner. I was like all of us, you know, there's sins of the age, mm. right? So we're all kind of just the same. You know, we all kind of just did all the same sins. And so when people go, you, you hear, hear these, especially in the evangelical world, they'll, they'll tell all their sins, and they're like, you know, I had fornicated in college you know i had three girlfriends it's almost and it's like they're oh, proud they're, like pro they're boasting of, they're boasting yeah. in their sin I, yeah I, and i want to say bro that's kind of lame dude i, I, I will the, say i don't look at you as kind of a lamester nerd i think that the greatest the greatest testimony is to say god spared me from that 100 percent. i wish god had spared me from hurting so many people right um but it wasn't exceptional i wasn't any different than the other my friends or dudes in my dorm or whatever um so i didn't want to be that guy you know, and I would hate to. There, I think a lot of Christians who are raised right, 
they look and they the grass is greener on the other side. I'll never forget in Damien when I was a teacher at Damien High School here in Hawaii, and I was teach in one of my classes and I was teaching on chastity, and I you know I said guys I was responsible for an abortion when I was 17. I had two children by the time I was 19, and I was trying to communicate to these boys the consequences of, of unchastity. And then one of the students was right. Oh, well, I wouldn't say one. They, they were like, they got a different message. One of the students was like, oh, oh, Mr. Jones, you was good with the girls, bro. You won't play. You won't yeah. play, Mr. Jones. And so that's how they took it. So when you're writing a book like this, it's very challenging. But I wanted to address the sin of presumption. I do work out my salvation with fear and trembling. And I am so grateful for the church and the sacraments. And, and I'm so grateful that our Lord, you know, suffered and died for us. But then I wonder, do I correspond my life to the, all of the grace that God has given me? And I have to say, probably not. Um, you know, I say that naturally no one has done, this might sound a little boastful. I, I say no one has done more with less natural gifts in their life than me that I've met or known because I have no natural gifts. I've written books, run political campaigns from the State House to the White House, make movies. No one has done more with less natural gifts. But then I say no one has done less with so much abundant grace. Mm -hmm. Because what people can't see is how God just opens doors and kicks me in the river and I pop out at the right place at the right time. And then I can look at how much I have squandered all of the grace that God has given me. And so that, that makes me tremble. That makes me tremble. So that's why you may not see me in heaven. Pray God. And when people say that to me, they're pompous. What do you mean you're not going? I won't see you in heaven. I'm like, yeah, I don't think you'll be there. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're there. being presumptuous now, they're right? They're being presumptuous. No, I'll be there. Come on. Of course, I'm lovable. Look at well, me. You know, what's, what's interesting, though, uh, you know, my dad was a, a Catholic deacon. And uh, one of his great ministries, um, you know, baptisms and weddings, but was funerals. And at a funeral, you you want to comfort people, but you don't want to give people false comfort. I mean, you hear it time and time and time and time again. He's in a better place. Maybe not. Maybe not. It's appointed on man once to live, once to die, and then the judgment. And that judgment is either you, you as C.S. Lewis said, I just read The Great Divorce again this last weekend. Ultimately, there's two types of people in the end. Those who say to God, thy will be done, and God says, come into my kingdom, and those to whom God says, your will be done. You know, you can have it your way. And they go into that inward, downward Dante inferno of, 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 of self, of isolation from others and from God, of course, completely. And so there is, there is this, um, this, this sense that we have to make that decision. And, and, and maybe we're not going to be perfectly purged and purified at the moment of our death. But God has his mercy if we die in sanctifying grace and with the life of Jesus in us, that he will bring us to a place of purgatory to, to complete uh, this purgation. To, 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 and it's a, and pur purgatory is a place of great dignity. It's a place where God says, I'm not just going to presto change, change. Yo. The minute you die, okay, boom, you're perfect. No, he's going he's gonna to allow us to make decision, a little bit of decision at a time of releasing this, our clenched fist on our own life and, and releasing it to his love, his grace, his will, which... His love and his will and, and, and his will are the same. And also, you know, God is just. And so there is some, some consequences for our sins we may pay for in purgatory. But in, but in purgatory, there's, I've heard the statement that the, the song of justice is played in the key of mercy. We're talking with Jason Jones, movie to movement com, one of our most returned guests on our, on our show. We'll be right back with Jason. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak coming to you from Waikiki Beach. Hey, you want to know something really stupid? Running with the bulls, that's stupid. I've dropped in on big waves, I've skydived, but you know, running with the bulls, you have zero control over the rest of the people that are running with you and zero control over the 12 bulls. It's a very stupid idea. And it's so stupid that I actually did it twice. I used to go to France and surf in Biarritz, and we were just over the hills from the Pyrenees down to Pamplona, and we'd go down there and we'd make that run. It's very imprudent. It's the most, probably one of the most imprudent things I've ever done. 
The virtue of prudence, though, is often misunderstood. People think of prudence as being timid, but nothing could be further from the truth. Prudence is really not needed if you're just going to sit on your couch and watch TV and yell at the evening news. Prudence is needed and really only needed when you want to do something bold. And if you're a Christian, God is calling you to do something bold. When I learned to fly an airplane, they used to give me this flight, this pre-flight checklist, and I'd go around the plane and I would make sure all these things were in order. And then I would get in the plane and make all certain all these things were in order. If you're going to do something like fly an airplane, you should be very prudent before you take off in that airplane. When you go fly, when you go to jump out of an airplane in a parachute, there's a certain way you test your parachute to make sure that it's packed correctly. And I live uh, part of the year in Cocoa Beach, Florida, where you can see the rockets being launched into space. Before those men flew to the moon, they, believe me, that was a very, very, very bold thing to do, but they were very prudent. They went through all their checklists. And we listen to the launch pattern on our, on our headsets. When they're about to launch a rocket, you hear all these pre-checks they're doing. So prudence is the virtue that gives you uh, the boldness, the ability to be bold. And God is calling you to be bold. But prudence means making the right decision every time. This is Bear Wozniak with DeepAdventure.com. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. Hey, if you haven't been to the Bear Wozniak, deepadventure.com web store, you really will be shocked what we have there. We have all of my books, and since I'm a Benedictine oblate, we have the St. Benedict Exorcism necklaces and rings and crosses too, plus tons of cool t-shirts for men and women, wrist rosaries, warrior rosaries, daily inspirational journals for either a man or a woman, and so much more. Our deepadventure.com web store is awesome. So check it out if you want to find the perfect gift. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to our website, deepadventure.com. We have a place there for our mama bears. And for the men, we have a Bear School of Manliness, which we continue to work on and update on an ongoing basis. It's a place, men, where you can go through our curriculum. Uh, you know, it's, it, there's 36 different lessons there designed to go through one month at a time. We go through as a group. <clears throat> and some this, The first year is basically on the virtues. And then the, ne the next two years is based on my next book called Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? The, there's 24 the 24 rules of manliness but what i'm most thrilled about if, if the you know this is what i want men to get this you can go to this site and you can join and you can have your sons have a log on also and you can actually work through this curriculum with your sons that are 10 12 13 confirmation age and above and and have a tremendous dialogue with them about all these areas of manliness you don't you uh you have a, a just a great way to open it up because we have videos we have we have um writings we have short audio things so it's just a great way and you can track them as they take their lessons and as you lead them through it so go to bear school of manliness well deepadventure.com takes you there and join the school of manliness now now um there's our guest jason jones uh you know he's the most manly guy i know um that's what he told me, and uh, he, he's, uh, we love him. Uh, we love him, love Jason Jones. And one of the reasons I love him is because um, he, he isn't perfect. He is a tough guy, he is a nice guy. But ultimately, I see in his, this, this, the heart of David in him, this desire to do right, and to, to do good, and to do God's will. So tell us, tell us a little bit more about uh, your, what, what, your, what your people's response should be to the next book you're writing for Sophia. What, what do you want yeah. to, them to gain from that? You know, Bear, I'm writing a book. So when I was an atheist, one of the reasons, one of the, one of the things that I most um, kind of repulsed me from the Christianity that I saw was I felt that it made friends of mine, people I knew that were kind of um, broken, feel unholy or unworthy of God. 
So the one one of my hopes is this book would make people know that they are worthy of God, that God loves them. I think there are people who feel that they are unlovable to God. You know, Bear, you and I have lived, I lived in Waikiki for 12 years. I put myself through college working at Chuck's Steakhouse and I would walk around Waikiki. I got to know, you know, I, I got to know everybody. I knew every homeless person by name. I still know a lot of the homeless here that have been here for 30 years, Bear. Right. No, there are people that are, are on the streets of Waikiki that we've I've known for 30 years. I there's this one elderly elderly black woman. She's really broken and sick now. I remember as a young infantryman in the late 80s seeing her, she would always dress very elegantly with her shopping cart and it would take like meticulous care of her hair. And now that was over 30 years ago. Now she's elderly. I knew all of the pimps, I knew all of the prostitutes. There used to be a lot of um, that activity on the main road in Waikiki, which you don't see anymore. At least I haven't noticed it. And I knew all the drug dealers and I never did drugs. I did, it wasn't that, but I would talk to them. So when I became a Christian, I started going to a Protestant church, Calvary Chapel, and I lived on Cujillo and I would take my Bible and I would go to Spinners, if you remember that. that yeah, dive. I was trying to remember but, Spinners the other day. I was talking with a local yeah. brother. That's where the Beach Boys and all the surfers would hang out after and it closing was a, hours. It was a tough bar, it was a, right? It was a right, you, you know. It was a tough bar. To, yeah, absolutely. It's I got a lot of fights at Spinners, by the way. So, dangerous but I would go place. there, and they knew me as kind of a scrappy guy, right? Like I wouldn't take. I would. I was quick to be. You know, I, I was quick to throw. So when I started becoming a Christian, I would bring my, and the owner was an Italian guy from Chicago. And um, if you remember that guy, I think he went to prison for life or something or other. But I would go there with my Bible, my Schofield dispensation really? uh. <laughs> Bible. And I would study. And I started asking the drug dealers, the pimps, the prostitutes, the street performers, will you come with me? And I called a beer and Bible with Jason. And I would buy the pictures if they would come and study the Bible with me. Now, to mind you, I had just become a Christian and I was not living a very Christian life, you know, again, and not in any exceptionally horrible way. I was just doing what you would expect a guy in his 20s who lived in Waikiki. Oh, wait a minute. What, this is like I'm connecting the dots here. My son Jeremiah used to go to a beer and Bible thing. Yeah, it was at, at it a was bar. Spinners. That Must was have me. Been, he, he, yeah, yeah he, another dot. That I, I would pay for the pictures and I would just read the Bible. I knew the Bible from nothing. No. I mean, I had just become a center to the truth of Christianity. Because this this woman Jan Judd, who was the act or the, the the widow of Senator Judd of Hawaii, who wrote the first bill to legalize abortion in the United States, she worked to undo what he did in her later life. We became friends. She invited me to church. She goes, "I'm not bringing you to my church." She had this like raspy voice. I don't know if they love Jesus there. So she brought me. She went to Episcopal Episcopal Church with all the, the fancy people. She took me to Calvary Chapel Calvary Chapel Honolulu. Yeah, wonderful I church. Would, I would go, I would work at Chuck's Steakhouse, I would go get my Schofield Bible, I'd head over to Spinner's, and there would be me. I'll never forget my buddy Andy Blum, who is director of Hawaii Right to Life. He lived in Maui. He said, can I stay with you tonight? And I said, yeah, but um, I got to go to a birthday party. Do you want to come? And he goes, sure. I go, it's going to be at Spinner's. It's not, it's going to be a little different. And he goes, well, what's that? Now, here I am, the assistant director of Right to Life. I go, well, it's, it's, a, it's a birthday party for a a young woman who's a prostitute in Waikiki and it's going to be her friends and pimps and it's going to be what it is. And he joined me at this birthday party. And what I got to know is even the pimps, the kind of guys we would instinctively hate, I realized they were as exploited as the girls. They'd be these young black guys that they brought from cities like Houston and Dallas and organized crime would bring them and shuffle them from city to city. They shuffle the girls from city to city. And I think back to the conversations I had about God. And, you know, I would, I got them all to start listening to Jay Vernon McGee. Jay I Vernon love, McGee. I love Jay Vernon McGee. That guy was yeah. so big in my life, right? Yeah. And so Kirk He's Franklin, a cowboy. I was this, this young kid, you know, pro-life conservative activist, but atheist. And, and, and I would listen to Kirk Franklin. This is how my relationship with God was birthed. Listening to Kirk Franklin. And then Jay Vernon McGee, welcome to the Bible bus. The Bible bus. bus. <laughs> on the Bible bus. Yeah, we don't always, we, we, we didn't agree with all of his. We don't agree with all of his theology, but man, that yeah. he he was a great teacher, great teacher. Yeah, and so I think of those folks, and I don't want any. There's so many of them are so better than I was then, and I would look at them, and um, I was reading a, a Japanese novel this week, and it said, um, 
you know, when you're in the, when you, when you walk through the gutters of the world, you see so many beautiful flowers that have fallen. Mm -hmm. The gutters of the world are clogged up with beautiful flowers mm -hmm. that have fallen. Mm -hmm. And so I want to write this book for people who it, 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 it might sound very harsh, the title, but it's really because a lot of broken people will see someone who's got a book deal or has a, a radio show or makes movies is someone oh, so much better than me. No, 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 no. You're better than me. Your relationship with God is better than me. Our moral life and our spiritual life, they're different things. And there are people who live very depraved moral lives. And we don't know, though, through their brokenness and their sorrow and their humility, their love for God is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And I want them to approach the church, approach our Lord, approach the sacraments, and know that they're there for them. They are not outside of God's mercy. And so it might sound, if you think of the title, but that's who I'm writing the book for. You know, the, I was not, I was born on Rocky Soil. So many of us were born on Rocky Soil. You know, it's so funny. You know, Cindy and I were just talking about this yesterday. We were talking about Rocky Soil. I, there was an atheist, a friend of hers who has an atheist friend who, you know, I, I look at people, sometimes they're really atheists. Sometimes they just have an angst towards God and want to deny him. But we were talking about how so many, so there's so many people too that have, re, the word of God has fallen and it's sprouted, but it really never gets deep. So how do people break that? That that how do how do people get go deeper? How do, I mean, they have they have to. We all have to look, work our salvation look, our trembling. Yeah, but look at how many times in a in a out hiking someplace in the mountains or the rocky areas, you will see a little plant grab a hold of a rock. And in time, that rock with more little plant here, little plant there, it'll split that rock. It'll split the concrete. So the, oh. there is there is hope for people, even no matter what soil that you were, that seed fell yeah, on. Yeah, so and that's what I that's what I want people to know, that that there is hope for those of us. Um, that rocky soil can be tilled. Allow mm -hmm. our Lord to till the soil. The sacraments to till the soil, your spiritual life to till that soil. This is Bear Wozniak with, the, with uh, the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're talking with Jason Jones from Movie to Movement. Your last book that came out is called what again, Jason? The Race to Save Our Century. And, and, uh, and sadly, mm -hmm. uh, it came out in 2014. We laid out that we were careening towards greater genocides and democides and wars in the 21st century than the 20th. And since our book came out, we had the eruption of ISIS and the genocides in the Levant and in Iraq and Syria. We had the rise of, um, or we had the imprisonment of three million Uyghurs you know, in Chinese occupied pe East Turkey. Pe people think that, oh, we're modern now, that, that stuff like that doesn't happen. We're talking with, with Jason Jones. You can find him at Movie to Movement and his podcast, The Jason Jones Show, is available everywhere. We'll be right back with Jason and more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. That's it. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak Adventure possible. We invite our mama bears to join our non-Facebook community created just for you, to share the journey with each other and to take the self-guided one-year course on the Virtues Plus. You have free access to all of the Long Ride Home TV show, all of the Bear Wozniak video version of our radio show, plus the Catechism in a Year videos, all at deepadventure.com. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, we have our TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, is uh, on Prime Video. Three, three seasons of it are up on Prime Video. Uh, so you can sit down in front of your TV anytime uh, and flip on our show when someone you would really love to evangelize uh, would love to would, would would be exposed that we have so many men tough guys that like watching the show and oh it's about motorcycles and then they, then they find out oh these guys are 
are uh, are Christians, and they find oh, these guys are Catholics, you know. And so, it's just a great way to 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 expose people to to the gospel and to the Catholic Church. It's also available if you join us at uh, deepadventure.com. You become a member. We, we give you free access to all of the a YouTube link to all of them. Plus, you get the director's cut before it even sent over to EWT. And we're currently working on our Hawaii episodes, so you'd be getting there's three or four episodes that are ready for you to view now if you join at deepadventure.com and pray for us because uh, we rely on your gifts and support to to do this work. Uh, and it is a tally award winning uh, TV show. It's 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 it, it's not just um, talking heads. It's 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 guys on motorcycles and it's gritty and real. One of our one of our um, <clears throat> in one of our first shows, we invited Jason Jones to participate. And Jason, do you? Re- Jason is our guest today from movie to movement Do you remember that moment when we w- we were walking in front of the brothels and we were carrying the cross and praying the rosary? T- just yeah. describe that and what and what street it was on. Yeah, I don't. The, uh, the crossroad. Street. The crossroad was row. Oh, it was Telegraph and Row. Yeah, tell us about That's that. Right. Exp- tell us about that because you see there, you, we saw there, the vulnerable being uh, being taken advantage of. Yeah, let me tell you what was struck me about that. I, um, Bear, you know, you and I, you have, you. I'm on your TV show, which is a great privilege. We make movies. I have a podcast, and a right. But what, what was striking to me about that was these young, I mean, these older Mexican women and some young guys week in and week out were there evangelizing in uh, that community, talking to the young women that worked in the brothels. And um, there we were. And when I saw there was on the cross of row and telegraph and, and, and the impromptu, you asked me to give a talk about the By the way, those people. brothels are gone now. Praise God. Yeah. And, and this is what I wanted to say. I always tell people who... <laughs> Like those ladies, you know, they thank us for all we do. I go, what I do is thin soup. What I do is very thin. What mm-hmm. you do is deep. Amen. You're at that telegraph road every week. Yeah. Okay. I, you and I, we got to be on a TV show being there. We were there for like an hour. Right. These, they're there all day, every right. day, all day, every day, all day, everybody. Oh, no one sees it. So I said, what I do is very thin soup. These, those, so that was one thing that struck me. And then I remember they didn't see the big dudes. And the pimp came out to bully some folks. <laughs> yeah, the guy drove up in the jeep. Yeah, and another and came out, and they, and here we are. We have our, we're we're bikers. We have our biker gear on. We look like we're we might be menacing, but then these all of a sudden these these the the enforcers showed up while yeah. we were in front praying. <laughs> and then I guess I lost my cool, but uh, and got in their face. But um, that's why I'm Rocky Soil Bear Wise. <laughs> But yeah, it was because they were bullies. These guys weren't tough guys anyway. They were, they were, and you know, and what I learned going back to the beer in the Bible, um, if you got to talk to those guys, you'd realize they were as broken as wounded as those girls. Broken as wounded as those girls. And um, so that was that was really profound. And I, you know, something about your your TV show, Bear, being on that is, I mean, all the time people are coming up to me talking to me about the show, and we do so much. Like we've, I'm in. Um, I'm in uh, Doug Barry's movie coming out next week, right? But awesome. you shoot it, you shoot it, and then six months later it comes out. But you've done twelve things since you forgot you even did it, and then people right. come up to you and go, "My phone was blowing up after Doug Barry's premiere." Like, oh, we loved the movie, or and people come up to me all the time. I can't wait till the Hawaii episode comes. It's where I, I join the Castrati Choir, yeah, so where, I, where we do a, <laughs> our local Sifu who's practices in the Lua, the Hawaiian art of bone breaking demonstrates some things on Jason <laughs> beer volunteers me for a horrible procedure <laughs> but um yeah no that was that was tremendous and and you know that's it people who are living the apostolic life in their parish community being here in Hawaii we we were driving to meet some of our friends on the west side we drove past my old parish and my kids said what's going on at our old parish and we looked well it's what they do all the time every week week in and week out year in and year out they 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 have uh, a food pay, a food pantry for the local homeless, and the local homeless were lined outside of our parish, and that's really what it's about is that apostolate in your community. For some of us, we're so overwhelmed with caring for a loved one, you know, a child with autism or a parent with dementia, um, or we're so overwhelmed building a business that that employs five people in your community at your local little pizza shop and and it take and you put all your money into it out of your mortgage but they're doing the stuff 
Yeah, they're that's doing that the they're doing the stuff. You know, I, I was I got to hear Archbishop Chaput speak at the Napa Institute a few years ago, and they, someone asked him, "What's the greatest evangelistic program that you? What, what's one of the two or three good ones that you know of?" And he said, "Get married, have lots of children, raise them up in the Lord." That's doing the stuff. And when we go into church, Cindy and I, we you know we arrive. There's already these these different sprinkled here and there are women that are there alone. A lot of them are older women, and they're praying the rosary. That's the stuff. That's why Jason Jones or Bear Wozniak get to have the, have this more visible presence, is because there's people like that that are that are praying that that grace that's released there propels us forward. But it's mm-hmm. that th- that's raising those children, coaching little league. And in Hawaii, we see too not just your children, but being an uncle to other children that maybe aren't being formed as well. And by the way, older men need to be uncled too. There's there's a lot of men in their twenties, thirties, forties, even maybe older, who need to have a man in their life that will affirm them and say, "I'm proud of you," and and you're doing good, and and affirm them. Men men uh, <clears throat> so many men. Uh, you know, I, I, I was talking to a young man the other day, and, and he, he that I knew knew here, and all of a sudden I see a baby, then I see another baby, and I just tell him, "I'm so proud of you." And it's like, I don't think anybody's ever told them that before. So. No, you know, we used to have beer in society. We had the society of men, the society of women, society of children. They were like these three societies living along side by side. And I, well, the reason we're so lonely today is we're, we're individuals. Even though we don't even have, we had the families, then the members of the families were, the children were a part of the society of children and the wives were the society of women, the men were the society of men. We're very lonely because we don't see that anymore. You know, you and I living in Hawaii for so many years, or when I lived in Glendale, California, amidst the Armenian community, I could see that they had still the society of men, the society of women, the society. Go, of go to go to Little Havana. Yeah, Little Havana. When I go to the Middle East or Iraq, or now the work I've been doing in Afghanistan, you know, I'll go to these dinner parties and or these events with and. And then I look and I see that they don't look so lonely. We live in such one of the, the greatest blessings through the apostolic life by that I've been given is I'm not lonely. I am surrounded by really, really close friends. The, the, the gift that God has given me through my work in the pro-life movement is I no one in the world has a more beautiful community of friends than I do. I mean, I have the best friends in the world, the most beautiful, compassionate, loving and that's the gift of the apostolic life. Mm. And I say, when you when you live at the foot of the cross, all the jerks have left. Mm. And you look to your left and your right, and who do you see? The Blessed Mother, Beautiful. John, Mary. Mm. You're the and and so and a lot a I lot of women. <laughs> and I know if you're listening to this, you're living the apostolic life, or you're peeking in. Like maybe, you know, I hope I always hope when I do something like this, there's a guy like me that's a waiter who's running a muck, but he found your show. And he's right. listening to this exactly in the midst of it all, in the midst of all the other things he's doing. And I would say the first thing you need to remember is, is you're in that rocky soil and the seed has fallen. Um, do not let your sin separate you from God, your Amen. habit, right. your formation, right. your spiritual life should run ahead of your moral yes. life. Your moral life will follow. Yes. But I it, spent time. Yeah, we got we to gotta break away, Jason. Okay. But go ahead and sum that thought up. No, oh, that's it. Do not let your sin separate you from God. If you're not a baptized, confirmed Catholic, let your relationship with God run. Your moral life will follow. Spend time in the Word. Spend time yeah. in prayer. Spend time. You're going to fall. You've got yeah. habits of a lifetime. You know, but, but wait, when you have you're a, lonely and secure. Yeah, when you experience the Lord's presence and sin presents itself, you're like, I don't want to do that because I, I don't, I don't want, I, I don't want to miss out on this intimacy with this intimacy with the Lord. Uh, you know, I got to ask the listeners this question: Jason Jones has been on our show probably almost as much as anyone. Would you like to have more Jason Jones on our show? If you would, can you leave a comment if you're listening on YouTube? Just say more cowbell, and uh, if, <laughs> if if we get if we get a lot of people saying more cowbell. Then we'll have Jason Jones back again soon. Jason Jones, movie to movement dot com, one of the great pro life, uh, one of the, the people having a great impact in, in the pro life area, and uh, go to movie movie to movement dot com and you'll find uh, new visions, new ways. Because now that now that the building permit's been given to us, 
we got to build. Now that we have the open door, we got to let down the floodgates. Thank you, Jason, for joining us. Say hello, hello. Watch, Jason just saluted me. That's funny because when I when we go to eat breakfast, my wife and I sometimes she'll salute me, which just means didn't, don't we want to make the sign of the cross while the sudden Holy Spirit before we eat? Okay, my brother Jason Jones, love you. Have a good trip back to the pain land. Aish, us, Ahui aloha. Ho, and aloha. Bye. Hey, if you haven't been to the Bear Wozniak DeepAdventure.com web store, you really will be shocked what we have there. We have all of my books, and since I'm a Benedictine oblate, we have the St. Benedict exorcism necklaces and rings and crosses too, plus tons of cool t-shirts for men and women, wrist rosaries, warrior rosaries, daily inspirational journals for either a man or a woman, and so much more. Our DeepAdventure.com web store is awesome. So check it out if you want to find the perfect gift.